let yn denote the convolution of hn and gn where hn is equal to 1 over 2 power n un and gn is a causal sequence if y0 is equal to 1 and y1 is equal to 1 over 2 then g1 equals option a is 0 option b is 1 over 2 option c is 1 and the last option option d is 3 over 2 so let's move on to the solution according to the question yn is equal to the convolution of hn and gn signal y n is equal to the convolution of signal hn and signal gn and signal hn is equal to 1 over 2 power n un signal hn is equal to 1 over 2 power n multiplied to the unit step sequence un and gn is a causal sequence signal gn is a causal causal sequence this implies signal gn is equal to 0 for all the values of n which are less than 0 we already know this point now we will focus on signal yn signal yn we can write as summation k equal to minus infinity to infinity signal hk multiplied to signal g n minus k we can write signal hk equal to 1 over 2 power k multiplied to uk so in the next step we have summation k equal to minus infinity to infinity 1 over 2 power k multiplied to uk multiplied to gn minus k now because of uk the summation from minus infinity to minus 1 will be equal to 0 therefore we can perform the summation from 0 to infinity and have the same result so in the next step we will write summation k equal to 0 to infinity 1 over 2 power k multiplied to g n minus k now we will focus on g n minus k we are having discrete time signal g n and if we replace n by k we will have g k and there is no difference between g n and g k except that they have different variables and both the variables n and k are integers and as g n is a causal sequence signal g k will also be causal sequence and this implies signal g k is equal to zero when k is less than zero now let us take one example sequence representing g k we know g k will be zero when k is less than zero so we have 0 for all the values of k which are less than 0 and for the values of k which are equal to 0 and greater than 0 we will take some random samples now when you perform the time reversal operation on g k you will have signal g minus k and then when you perform the time shifting operation by n on g minus k you will have signal g n minus k and the sequence g n minus k will look like this and from this sequence it is clear that when we multiply 1 over 2 power k u k with g n minus k then n should be greater than 0 
because when n is less than 0 then the result of multiplication is going to be 0 for all the values of k and when you add zeros you are going to get 0 therefore we will consider the summation from k equal to 0 to k equal to n we are performing the summation from k equal to minus infinity to infinity but we are going to get the non-zero values from k equal to 0 to k equal to n it is not guaranteed that all the values we are going to get after multiplication is going to be non-zero from k equal to 0 to n but we can guarantee that all the values outside this range is equal to 0 that's why we are performing the summation from k equal to 0 to n and this information that gn is a causal sequence is very helpful to decide the range of summation now we will move on to the next step of the solution we will calculate yn when n is equal to 0 this means we will have y0 and from here we can say that y0 is equal to summation k equal to 0 to n n is equal to 0 so we have summation k equal to 0 to 0 this means we are simply calculating the value of 1 over 2 power k gn minus k when n is equal to 0 and also when k is equal to 0 so we have y0 equal to 1 over 2 power 0 multiplied to g0 minus 0 and this is equal to y0 equal to g0 and in the question value of y0 is given it is equal to 1 therefore g0 is equal to 1 and now we will put n equal to 1 and this will give us y1 equal to summation k equal to 0 to 1 1 over 2 power k multiplied to g 1 minus k now when k is equal to 0 we will have 1 over 2 power 0 multiplied to g 1 minus 0 plus when k is equal to 1 we have 1 over 2 power 1 multiplied to g 1 minus 1 so we have y 1 equal to g 1 plus 1 over 2 multiplied to g0 g0 is 1 so we have 1 over 2 now if you go back to the question you will find y1 is also given it is 1 over 2 so finally we are getting 1 over 2 equal to g1 whose value we want to calculate plus 1 over 2 and from here it is clear that the required g1 is equal to 0 and this is our answer now when you look at the four options you will find option a is the correct option we were required to calculate g1 and it is equal to 0 so this is all for the lecture i will see you in the next one